Building Minecraft is pretty much just putting some blocks together, but making your Minecraft world look amazing and pop is something completely different. Today, I'm giving you 25 or more build ideas for your Minecraft survival world that will increase the quality of both the aesthetic and the lore of your world. Which means, I hope, it will make it look loads better. Let's get on with it. And if something in this video inspires you, do let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. And the first thing I'm going to talk to you about is paths. Now, pathways are not just a way to get from one place to another. Well, I suppose they kind of are, but they don't have to look rubbish. But they can be anything from the odd pathway block with a bit of coarse dirt to something far more complex. But what I think is really important is a path being fit for purpose. So my first really big idea is path transitions. So I'm out in the wilds of my world. The pathways are gonna be almost non-existent. I've got just the odd path block, a little bit of coarse dirt every here and there. But as I start to get into a little bit of civilization, I bring in more path blocks. So we transition from a few path blocks into just a few more and with the odd little bit of packed mud, because let's face it, packed mud is just dirt that's stuck together. We've got a little step here coming up with some mud bricks and then we bring in a little bit of gravel as we move into a little bit more of a civilized area. That gravel brings another level of color. However, we're still living in some dirt, we're still living in some grass, we're still living in plenty of path blocks. But then I bring in some mud brick, we're transitioning again. But you'll notice I've also brought in a few little fences as well. Obviously this is getting close to some kind of habitation. And now there's stone. We're bringing in a little bit more stone more gravel the path is getting gradually more and more stony and more gray and less and less muddy we've also brought in some other little bits that I'm going to talk about in just a moment in comes some other brick blocks and we've got some moss in there as well just to give it a little bit of character then we're turning from these fences that we had before into some walls and then we've got another path that turns into a proper road this is made exclusively of stone brick variants cobble stone bricks stone gravel, that kind of thing. So you can see your pathway should match what it's being used for. If it's coming into some kind of civilized area, a town, a village, you need to change it up from just a few little path blocks. You need to make it fit. That is a seven stage path transition. I think it works beautifully from coming out from the wilderness into a town. Although every single stage deserves some bushes. You can never have too many bushes. Now, I mentioned it a few seconds ago, but bringing in a bit of lore to your build is a good idea. This milestone saying how far it is to the next town is always a really good plan. Any little points of interest like this always add to the aesthetics of your world. And when you get closer to a settlement, you're going to want to get some lampposts, especially inside the settlement. This is a really wooden, rustic one. We've got a wood block there with a stone wall. We've got a fence, four trap doors with a slab of wood there and four lamps. Really easy to do and you can repeat that with very few resources. And then this one here is a little bit more stony, perhaps a little bit more at home inside or just outside a settlement. A block of stone brick with some buttons on it, wall fence and wall again but up the top there we've got a hopper making the connection we've got a slab on the top and we've got four of those trap doors making sure that it doesn't show the hopper too much but one of them is flapped up with a little lantern on to add some points of interest along your country roads bring in some abandoned campsites this one has got a fire pit three of the four logs are still there but the fourth one is completely burnt down into a coal block we've got logs that they sat on whilst they were around the fire in the night time we've got barrels we have got a tent with a sleeping bag still inside it i wonder if these guys got chased off by mobs these are really quite simple to put together it's a little bit of a path going around a few stone blocks putting some campfires that are extinguished, sticking a cauldron, flap some trapdoors over it, put in a composter, some bushes, and Bob's your uncle, you've got yourself an abandoned campsite. Custom trees are also a great way of getting some life into your landscape. They look so much better than normal trees. And I've got four different options for you to choose from. The first one's really simple. Oak logs, a few spruce stairs, and the odd spruce fence post as well. Once you've got the fence post in at the top, make sure that you put leaves around all of those fence posts. That will give you a really interesting asymmetrical shape. And that symmetry is further broken by having these lanterns on different length chains, which gives it a much more natural look. The second custom tree is more like a willow tree with these fingers dropping down from the canopy. However, it is still very, very similar. However, we've also added a few trap doors, spruce trap doors in a few places just to give a little bit more texture to that bark. I have also put 
a water bucket underneath the trunk of the tree, which has allowed me to irrigate all around it and put in a little bit of wheat. It just gives a little bit more color. More structure at the top means we can have a bigger canopy. And I've also put these flowering azalea leaves in there as well to give it some extra color and a bit more texture. The custom spruce tree is nothing more than spruce logs going up in a straight line with some logs coming off just one block underneath and some spruce fence posts. I've also put in some stairs and some trapdoors at the bottom just to give the foot of the tree a slightly bigger feel. But then it goes up in a standard diamond. You can see I've just placed leaves around in a diamond circle shape at the bottom, put up a level ever so slightly smaller, left a gap and then come up a smaller level, left a gap, smaller level and so on and so forth until we get to the top. And it actually makes for a really gorgeous looking pine tree. And then finally, we've got a poplar tree. That is just a fence post going up in a straight line, about nine posts coming out just one level here and then putting leaves all around each side. It needs to be fairly straight up and down. You don't want it to be too fat at the bottom, otherwise it will look uneven. Poplars are very straight and thin. Maybe add some history off of your path. Here we've got an overturned cart made of simply trap doors, nothing more. These trap doors are resting on the ground. These trap doors here are flapped up to form the base of the cart. And also these oak trap doors give a nice wheel effect. All these bits and pieces have just fallen out of the cart and it just looks like it's been abandoned. Any little detail like that just adds more to your world story. Another great idea is to make natural cave entrances look like they've been exploited by miners and yet ever so slightly overgrown that they've not been used recently. Inside here, I've got some support beams just made out of oak logs. I've put some trapdoors on the roof so as it looks like that's been lined up. I put in some smelting area here with furnaces and blast furnaces, a little bit of crafting and plenty of storage but with barrels so as I can embed them into the wall. You can create different different looks using these leaves, these steps, and also different types of block. We've got andesite, we've got cobble, we've got stone here. I've kept away from stone brick because that's more man-made. This looks like it's been excavated out of the mountain. As we go down, I've placed in some coarse dirt, put some ferns on there so as it looks like it's been overgrown. I've left some of the ores in the walls because it makes it a little bit more interesting. We've got some water and also some wheat planted up there for some different color. I've lit it up, but not too much, so it still looks like it's a cave and at the bottom we've got a ladder going into this natural cave here. Ponds and water features also make a massive difference to your world not just in your base or the surrounding area but out in the wilderness as well. This one is literally just a hole in the ground I've lined it with coarse dirt and some gravel I've put in some bone meal some sea pickles and also some lily pads although you don't have to put the sea pickles in that's just an extra little bit of light you could put some light around it these fences here with some lamps on have got plenty of light to stop anything spawning inside it. I have however However, use the water from this pond to irrigate some farmland so as I can grow up some wheat. Again, it gives some much different color and makes it a lot more interesting, as do these haystacks. And when you combine the yellow from the haystack, the green from the bushes, the blue from the pond, and the brown from those fence posts with a little bit of light, it makes for something really interesting that would work in your base or literally anywhere in your world as you're traveling around in it. And you can do a much larger pond as well. This one is surrounded by stone and dirt blocks and is a much bigger hole. It's still lined up with gravel, coarse dirt, but this time I've also put in some slabs and some steps just to soften up those edges because it is a much bigger hole. This one is decorated up not with wheat like the last one, what with flowers and also some sugar cane. I put some bulrushes here using some green glass and some brown candles on the top that work absolutely perfectly for that. And we've also got a bit of a waterfall, a natural water source coming out of that block at the top off of this naturally formed rock. Well, I say natural, it's natural after I've built it. Which brings me to something else you might want to consider, rocky outcrops. I know it doesn't sound quite right, but trust me, these things make a huge difference to your world. If you look around moors and plains in the real world, it's not just grass, you've got rock sticking out of the ground as well. And I've got four different designs you might want to think about. This first one's quite small. We've got some steps, we've got some slabs, and we've got a couple of blocks. There's literally very little to it, but as a result, it's given an extra feature on the landscape that draws your eye. This one's much bigger and incorporated in a little bit of coarse dirt so as it doesn't grow grass over it and put some grass on top of it that I got with some shears. It's exactly the same, stairs, slabs, blocks, using andesite, cobblestone and stone. Do avoid stone bricks for these because they're man-made and these are natural rocks. The third one's been adjusted a little with some man-made fences. We've lit it up and it's a bit overgrown with some more bushes. However, again, it is just slabs, cobblestone, 
stone and a sight and a few steps. But what you've got to remember is that you don't just get rocks in the middle of fields, you get lots of rocks on the shore. So our fourth rocky outcrop is this rocky shore. It's still structured in the same way, cobblestone, stone, andesite, slabs and steps. This time, however, I've used a little bit of the mossy cobblestone as well, just to give it as if it's got some moss and some weed stuck onto the rocks. I've waterlogged a few steps in there, so as we've got some rock pools, and I think the texture works really well. If you were to lay this all along the shore, you'd have a very, very natural looking shoreline. I've added some bushes so as it looks even more natural, but we have put some lights on it too. That way, when you're coming in on a boat, you'll be able to see the shore. Wait a minute. Did I just say boat? What a transition that was to the boats. I've got three boats to show you. Really simple designs, however. Don't get too excited. This one is an oak boat. It's just a small shipping boat. It's got a sail on it. It's got a mast. It's got a light on top of the mast. This is just literally made out of some fence posts and some wool. I put a button at each end so as it looks like it's rolled around a post. We've got some trap doors in here so we can load and unload as necessary and lights at both ends so it knows where it's going. Next up, we've got a tiny little spruce trireme and this one's got a sail that is made out of banners which I think works quite well actually we've got two lights at the top so people can see it but this is literally just a load of trapdoors around a single row of blocks with some stairs at the front and at the back so it makes for a great little boat just for a small one-man band we've got some rudders underneath it so as it doesn't tip over and then we've got a much larger trader's vessel here storing its oars, its barrels, and even a barrel of water there in that one. It's much wider, it's gonna have a lot more to store, and as a result, it's got two sails. The front sail, again, made out of banners. I've put more banners to make the sail slightly larger, but it is still just a mast made out of fence posts with a light on top. And then we've got our larger sail. It's furled there at the bottom. I know sometimes you can furl a sail at the top. I don't care, I furled mine at the bottom. Buttons there to represent how it's been held in place. And at the top, we've got a flag, top of the mast. This mast is a lot more sturdy. Some strip spruce there going all the way up to the top until we've got our flagpole there. And it's spread out sideways using more fence posts just to give a little bit of rigging for that sail to be able to crawl up. For harbors, rivers, lakes, or even the open sea, you can do all kinds of boats and it gives a lot more life to your world. Let's look at two other ways to use water now, a fountain and a well. Now fountains don't always have to be in a town center but often that's exactly where you'll find them. This one is literally a tower of stone walls with a little end rod at the top just to give a little bit of light. I've then put in some steps and some slabs to make sure that this water here is kept in this very specific shape that goes down into this holding area at the bottom. We've got dryness in there with those slabs too, the water's being held in place, but we do have light going up that water. Trimmed with stone brick, it's really, really simple and you could change the palette for pretty much any block. Quartz works really well for this type of build. And as for complexity, make it more flexible, put in more water sources, put in more slabs and stairs to make sure that you've got the water going exactly where you want it to. Welds can be a lot more simple. This is just a three by three square here. I've got some cracked stone brick, some upside down stone stairs, and then we've got a wall, a fence post and a wall going up to a diamond shaped roof. I've suspended a cauldron, which has got water in it, by a chain over a hole that is fairly deep, don't fall down it, you won't be able to get out, and a light just on one side to add to some asymmetry. Again, too much symmetry in the world is a bad thing. A little bit is great, but if you make everything symmetrical, it just looks odd. And speaking of walls, yeah, I know I wasn't speaking of walls, but I had to get into my wall somehow, didn't I? We have got this stone wall, and all this is is steps, slabs, and blocks placed so they are two blocks high, which means that they can't be attacked by, oh, that one's not though, but I missed one, can't be attacked by mobs. Mobs can't get over them, so they're quite good just to roam around the countryside, literally going uphill, down dale. It makes for quite a nice texture if you mix in a little bit of cobblestone, a little bit of andesite, and a little bit of stone. And this time, because obviously it is man-made, you could also put some stone brick in there as well. But you can make these all kinds of interesting shapes and sizes. You can make them taller, you can make them wider. They work really, really well just to separate areas in your world. And if you don't like stone, what about a palisade? All a palisade is really is a load of wooden logs upended and sticking up out of the ground. Don't do them in a straight line because they won't look so good. Make sure you go in and out so you've got a little bit of depth and texture there. Strip some of them, don't strip all of them. Put a button on them, but put the button the same number of blocks from the top 
on each and every one so the buttons go up and down this one is on the second block from the top on every one of these things and we've got walls and fences kind of scattered across the top with lighting you don't have to add the lighting if you don't want to and at the bottom we've added some slabs and some steps just because these are rocks this isn't just going to come straight out the ground it needs to have a little bit of structure and I think that works really really well obviously with a little bit of bushes and while strictly speaking these could probably have a video for themselves what's really important to keep your minecraft world looking fantastic are the walls around your structures and your bases so i'm going to show you six wall designs first up three in wood and this first section here and bear in mind any of these can be repeated for as long a wall as you like this one is pretty simple we've got some oak struts we've got spruce coming out to give some depth we're using buttons we've also got a window i'm not using glass here i'm using fence posts to give that kind of old-fashioned medieval evil rustic look and we're using trapdoors as window shutters this one is super simple but when you build it up across a number of sections it looks absolutely fantastic for a large house this second section has got more detail i brought in a barrel between the two window sills and the window sills are now gray stone brick it just gives another dimension i think we've brought the overhang out ever so slightly more and we've incorporated things like bushes to give it a little bit of a natural feel and this design could work for an exterior wall of a building but also maybe a wall that goes around a village and then finally this has got a lot more depth we've used some composters in the struts here just to give a different type of texture two barrels not as barrels necessarily although you can use them as storage just to add some extra dimension to the inside of those struts we've done an extra internal level so we've got a wall that is too thick behind there that gives even more depth to this build and this would definitely work as an exterior wall to a town i recommend that if you're going to use it for a building remember the building has to be quite big because you've got a very thick wall there but sometimes you need your walls to be stone. So here's three stone wall options. This is a really simple stone wall right here. We've got normal stone brick with mossy stone brick as well towards the bottom. And then as we go up, we've got andesite and some stone just to give a bit of a gradient. This is really an internal wall, I think. We've got a barrel there for storage. And then we've got across here, we've got shelving that's made out of these trap doors. I really quite like the way that works. You could put things on the trap doors as well if you want, rather than put the lanterns on those posts. Perhaps you could put the lanterns on there or put in some pots with some flowers if you wanted to, although that's probably out of place on what's probably an inside of a castle wall. At the top, we've crenellated it up with upside down steps and right way round steps to give that kind of indented effect. And the crenellation continues right across the top. The second one could actually be the external side of the first one we looked at. We've got vines growing down over the window. We've got storage in barrels, but really they just add a little bit more of differentiation of color more than anything. Him. We've got a few lamps, some on some posts, some on top of those barrels, and then we brought in a little bit of cobblestone just to change up the way it looks because otherwise that stone brick is going to feel very flat. And then finally, we've got some additional detail. This has got a too deep wall, lots of extra depth, so it needs to go on a much larger building, I think. This could be internal or external, but perhaps lends itself to internal just a little more with a hanging down lamp and using a chain. We have also got a barrel and a cauldron there full of water. The shutters are on the inside, but the shutters could also be on the outside. The window is three high rather than two high, almost like an arrow slit there. We brought in some black stone buttons just to change up the color just a little bit. And we've got some carved stone brick in there as well. Again, it gives a different texture and it's much more pleasing to the eye. Incorporate a little bit of flat stone there in slabs and it just gives a really nice looking shape. Don't underestimate the importance of the walls of your buildings and your structures because I'm telling you now, I promise it will make a massive step change in your builds. And it's all very well me showing you these things in isolation, but it's when they all come together that really make an impact. Very recently, I did a village transformation video and used a lot of these ideas inside that. There's a link to how I did this and also how to get the world download for it in the description below if you wanna go and check it out. But I incorporated a lot of the ideas that I've been talking about for the last few minutes it's like this path transformation that we've got here. I come from the outside through the gate into the inside and we've changed up the path block. What I did here was I actually increase the amount of path rather than decreasing it. And then when I got further into the village, I put a lot more gray into it again. So we've got that transition. At the side of the path, I brought in some water feature. We've got a harbor with boats out there floating, ready to drop their wares off. And I placed the rocky outcrops along the edge just to show that it is not just a flat grass base. 
There's a number of custom trees which add a bit of character. The town centre has a fountain specifically designed for it, but we did also put in a little well. And at the other end of the town, we added more rocky outcrop against this second harbour with a crane, again, specifically designed for this build. With lots of different wall designs as well that have got plenty of depth. And whilst each thing in isolation is pretty good, when it all comes together, I have to say I'm pretty proud of what I made here. But it all came down to just using a few little different details, rocky outcrops, water features, walls, that type of thing, just to give it more character and to make it look more natural. I really hope you got some great ideas out of this video that you can put into your survival world. And don't forget to let me know in the comments below if that's true. And perhaps even send me an image through my Discord, through on Instagram or in Twitter. You choose which way you want to do it. I would really love to hear from you. We'll call that there until the next ideas video. I'll look forward to seeing you in the next one. You take it easy now. Bye.